We had an awesome time in God's presence on Friday, the 17th of April, 2021. Our prayer focus for the month was combating the spirit of stress, anxiety, and depression. And that day, God came down and answered our prayers. How do I know this? Because the, the Lord promised to show up whenever we call on him. The following day, on Saturday, the 18th of April, into Sunday, the 19th of April, I had a night vision. Suddenly, I heard his voice. He, he said, tell your sisters to forgive quickly. Then the Holy Spirit echoed Mark chapter 11, verse 25, into my heart. And that scripture says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. So today we want to talk about detoxification from poisonous substances. The Lord today wants to detoxify it. He wants to detoxify you and he also wants to detoxify me from every poisonous substances that may be in us. So what are these poisonous substances? They are offense, bitterness, holding on, holding on to hurt feelings, keeping malice, holding a grudge. Let's look at offense. Oxford English Dictionary defines offense in two ways. The first uh, definition is a breach of a law or rule, an illegal act. The second definition is annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult to or disregard for oneself. For the purpose of this meeting, we are taking, we are talking about the latter. This is the Bible's response to offense. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11, a good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger. It is in honor and glory to overlook a transgression or an offense without seeking vengeance or harboring resentment. The Bible also says in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats or gossips about a matter separates intimate friends. Now let's look at bitterness. The Oxford English Dictionary defines bitterness as Sharpness of taste, lack of sweetness. The second definition is anger and disappointment at being treated unfairly, resentment. It can also be rooted in extreme anger. For the purpose of this meeting, we are talking about the latter. This is the Bible's response to bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 to 15 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one sees the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this may become defiled. Let's look at malice. The Oxford English Dictionary defines malice as the desire to arm someone. But the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 also says, All bitterness, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, 
even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Let's look at slander. Oxford English Dictionary defines slander as the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. Meanwhile, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, that, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Let's look at hurt. The Oxford English Dictionary defines hurt as cause pain or injury. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter, two, chapter 4, verse 2, with all humility, forsaking self-righteousness and gentleness, maintaining self-control, with patience, bearing with one another in unselfish love. Let's look at grudge. Oxford English Dictionary defines grudge as a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulting from a past insult or injury. But the Bible tells us in, Le in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, you shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. If we keep any of this, which is offense, bitterness, hurt, malice, and grudge in our souls, it builds up into unforgiveness. This causes us to protect ourselves or react to it in various ways. This protection can be either spirit-filled, that is when we allow the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God to lead the way we react, or flesh-based. That is, if we allow our flesh to dictate how we react. Most times, my sisters, when God wants to promote us to a greater height or turn our life around for good, he will challenge some areas of our characters and behaviors that we need to change. Some of these behaviors or characters have become our blind spots over a period of time, but we may not see it. That's why I call them blind spots. But God wants to point them out, and he will need to use people. God uses human vessels to bless us. God, several times, he will not come down physically to come and be a, bless, a, a blessing to you. He will need a vessel. He will use human beings to bless us. He also uses human vessels to challenge our behaviors or characters to test if we are fit to receive the blessings he's about to pour on us. Can you remember the story of Judas? Judas was set up before he was even born to betray Jesus. If there was no betrayal by Judas, there would have been no crucifixion. There would have been no death there would have been no resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And there would have been no salvation for you and I. But we thank God for Judas. Thank God for what Judas did. And that is the reason why you are now, you and I are saints of God today. Amen. So rather than looking inwardly and prayerfully taking matter to God and ask him to teach us by his spirit how to handle issues, we sometimes focus on what the other person have done wrong and not confronting the main issue in our heart. What have I done? The first thing you ask, we are quick to justify ourselves. That's why I love that scripture that we read in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Check yourself first. There may have been some traces of things that we did wrong. So the first thing we should do is to ask God to have mercy. How did we make ourselves vulnerable? How did we allow this to happen? And to buttress our point, we, we begin to look for family members or friends to share our pain with so that we can gain their support. Sometimes the other party may even give ungodly advice on what to do. When offense, bitterness, 
hurts, malice, and grudge invade the heart and soul and are not put under check, they become poisonous substances that can endanger our souls. For the purpose of our discussion today and our prayer today, I will refer to offense, bitterness, hurts, malice, and grudge as the silent enemies of our souls. They are silent enemies of our souls. They are also what I will call the invisible uh, monster. The poisonous substances that may be killing us softly. These are the days of tribulations, my sisters. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10, when tribulation comes, many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. I pray that none of us will fall away. We will not betray each other. We will not betray members of our kingdom, communities or families or even people that are, um, that are in the body of Christ or outside of the body of Christ. People that trust us will not be betrayed by us in the name of Jesus. Many of God's people may become proud, puffed up by their knowledge of God or their gifting and become spiritual vagabonds. Some may talk to you rudely or look down on you. If you feel offended, my sister, deal with it. Don't let it be a stumbling block to your own movement or moving forward. Most times, the reaction to these poisonous substances are not spirit-led. Some people will leave their places of work, walk out of family setting that God has placed them, or even churches because of these silent enemies of our souls, because of these poisonous substances. They will leave. This could be risky, my sisters, because that work environment, that family setting, that church that place that God has placed you may be the path to the destination that God may be taking you to. And if you lose, if you meet, I mean, if you leave at that particular time, you may miss what God wants to do for you. Let me give a testimony at this point. I was um, I was a very I was a single parent when I gave my life to Christ. And the church where I gave my life to Christ then was in, in London. In that church, we had a very, our pastor was a wonderful man, very good teacher of the world, a very nice man, himself and his late wife. May her soul rest in peace. Very nice man. This man taught me step by step practical Christianity. But I had a problem with some of the ladies in the church. Some of them looked down on me because I was a single parent. Some of them looked down on me because I was a Nigerian. But you see, I refused to look at my environment. I was so zealous for God. I remained focused. I allowed God to take control. I did not allow the pain of the looking down on me and all those things to take a toll on me. I kept on moving on in Christ. And at a point in that same church, imagine if I had left. Imagine if I had said, well, if this is what Christianity is all about, I don't want to be a part of these people. And I carry my bag and my child and leave. But I did not leave. I was focused. I focused my attention on my God and what my pastor was teaching me. Suddenly, you will not believe that it was in that same church that I met my husband. And you will not believe that that single parenthood that people look down us, look down on, was the same thing that God used to bring my husband and I together. It was my daughter that God used to bring my husband and I together. To God be the glory. So imagine if I had gone away. My sisters, if God has placed you in a place, remain there. If we channel offense, bitterness, hurts, correctly and avoid keeping malice and a grudge. 
they can become opportunities of growth and spiritual maturity for us and those around us. I just gave you my own testimony, and that is the truth. The person that is annoying you, the person that is hurting your feelings, may be a stump, may be a stepping stone to something greater for you. I encourage you to deal with offense, bitterness, hurt, malice, grudge in God's way. Deal with it in God's ways, my sisters. Otherwise, the environment they create in the soul region will not be comfortable for the Holy Spirit to operate. My sisters, you are very beautiful. You are, we are all beautiful. You are all beautiful. I see you on, online looking very beautiful. So some of us look a bit tired, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. You are looking so beautiful. Imagine as beautiful as you are. See yourself as a house, a beautiful house that you just walked in, in inside. You walk inside the house and you see this beautiful interior decoration. But I tell you what, if that place is too hot for you to stay, no matter how beautiful the place is, Will you stay? No, you will not. So is our body and our soul and our spirit. If we do not create a comfortable environment for the Holy Spirit to operate within us, it will leave. We need to uh, create a, a good environment for the Holy Spirit to, to move in, in our lives. When you are in the location God wants you to be, the devil will try his best to use the silent enemies of the, your soul to dislocate and uproot you from that position. He will try and try. If he doesn't work with one sister, he will try it with another brother. If he doesn't work with another brother, he can try it with your pastor. Why? Because your pastor is also man. It's not God and it's not the Holy Spirit. However, when you do not allow these silent enemies of your soul to move you, Satan will be so mad at you for aborting his plan for you. He will be so mad that you did not allow his plan for you to come to pass. When we keep looking at the weaknesses of our brethren, family, or colleagues, we become critical and judgmental of their actions leaving the log of wood in our own eyes and concentrating on the speck in our family member, brethren or colleagues. However, if we can handle the situation God's way, we can even win them over to God's position by the way we react to whatever they have done to offend us. So we we'll go from church, from one church to another. And these silent enemies of the soul, we keep tossing them around like football, ending up looking one out. Recently, in one of my sister's house, I saw a one out football. I, I, you can imagine somebody going, I mean, being tossed up and down. At some point, you look, the person will look worn out. If a check is not put on the soul, it can bust, it can bust. And that is when backsliding sets in. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. When God places us in a particular location or position, he directs our path. Don't change that location or position until you hear clearly and directly from God. Wait until you hear, my sisters. Do not allow your soul or your body to direct you. Some of us even get angry like Cain. Slander those God has, all those that God himself has tried, tested, and proven. Same way Cain did to Abel. Abel was so angry with his brother. The Bible says God himself assessed the offering of both of them. He accepted that of Abel and rejected that of Cain. When someone, especially those close to us and whom we trust, betray our trust. We feel pain, hurt, bitter, disappointed. My sister, this is okay. It is okay. But the Bible says, don't let it settle in your soul. Do not let it settle in your heart. 
It is okay to feel, to feel so, but don't let it settle in your soul. The Bible says, be angry. It didn't say we shouldn't be angry. Be angry, but sin not. In other words, be bitter, but don't let it turn into, uh, I, don't let it turn into something else. I mean, get rid of it immediately. If we don't keep offense, bitterness, hurt, malice, and grudge in check, they build up to unforgiveness. So unforgiveness does not just start like that. Unforgiveness is a build up of hurt, offense, malice, and grudge. Sometimes we call bitterness as resentment. Therefore, we need to forgive my sisters. We are intercessors and spiritual warriors. Intercession and spiritual warfare requires strict purity in person, in motive, and in relationship. Let's learn this lesson from this, our sister. The Bible tells us about a very important woman called the Syrophoenician woman in, Mark, in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. I want to read that story to you. I need you to please listen. Let us learn from this woman. If you will not learn from what I have shared, my own personal experience that I've shared with you, please learn from this woman of God, Syrophoenician woman. The Bible says in Mark chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered that not a word. In other words, he ignored her. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, Jesus is saying, I was not sent here for you. I was sent here for, my, for the sheep of, Israel, of the house of Israel. But listen to the response of this woman. The Bible says, Then she came and worshipped him. Instead of getting angry, she worshipped a maker. She worshipped the Lord. She said, Lord, help me. She was not angry. In another scripture, listen, I mean, listen to this verse. Even though she kept on beg begging Jesus, she said, Lord, please help me. Look at what by, uh, verse 26 says. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. In other words, Jesus said, you are a dog. I cannot give you my children's food. If it was you, what would you do? What would you do? You would go away. That, who does he think he is? Meanwhile, there must be something in that woman that Jesus was trying to challenge. He was trying to test something in that woman. Thank God she passed that test. She said, Yes, Lord. Yes, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. My sisters, unforgiveness, bitterness, hurts, Grudges and malice, those silent monsters, those poisonous substances, they can shift our focus from God. If this woman did not handle it well, her focus would have been shifted away from her maker and the only one who could heal her daughter. Keeping a grudge can be spiritually, emotionally, and physically draining. Forgiveness energizes and frees us to move on. You can move on with forgiveness. Forgiveness is a compassionate act of one's will to pardon an act, a mistake or an offense. An act 
act of detoxification your soul, de sorry, an act of detoxifying your soul from thoughts and feelings that binds you to an offense committed against you. It frees you. The, 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 uh, forgiveness frees you from the stress and some, and some of the hurting thoughts and pain of the harm done to you, my sisters. If you do not forgive and you remain bitter, it means the offender still has control over you. But forgiveness delivers you. You've heard me, some of my sisters in, in I think I've said this before in, in Akwanga, I've said this before in Joss and even in Lagos. If you do not forgive and you remain bitter, it means the offender still has control over you. So, Forgiveness is the only thing that can deliver you from the control of your offender. Our subconscious does not know the difference between a vivid image or remembered event. Your subconscious mind does not know the difference. Everything becomes real to your subconscious. But when we do not forgive, we may experience some medical or emotional consequences like insomnia, eating disorder, stress, indigestion, high blood pressure, even cancer, and many other things. I want you to look at this diagram very well. This is you and I. I told you you are beautiful. This is a biblical picture of who you, the warring woman of God, are. You are a you are the, we are taught that man is a spirit. That is you, the spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. My sister, say to yourself, I am a spirit. I do not get it. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. Keep that picture in your mind. When we repeatedly subject ourselves to painful, angry memories, they become toxic to the soul and eventually our soul begins to break down and this affects our body. Let me go back to that. Um, um, no, don't let me touch it. But if you, uh, as you keep that diagram in your mind, I wish there is a way I can go back to it without interfering with this thing. But if you look at that picture again, you find out that your soul is sandwiched between your spirit and your body. So if you train your soul to harbor bitterness, pain, anger, it will be forcing itself on your body and the body will be experiencing pain and all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of bad things. But if you train your spirit man, are you listening to me? If you train your spirit man so well, it will be pressing on the soul and will be neutralizing any evil thing or any pain that can cause, that the soul can cause to your body. So you need to really train your spirit to conquer that which is going on in the soul region. And these sub, uh, poisonous substances, the silent enemies of our soul, attacks us softly and silently from the inside out. It is very subtle. You will not even know. You won't even know that it's, it is your soul that is talking to you. You will think it is you. And it will start giving us physical pain, which if care is not taken, it can lead to disease or even death. May we not experience this in, my, in our lives in Jesus' name. My husband, P.O., for Lolusha Yogi, they invested something. He says, forgiveness is the only medicine in the heavenly spiritual pharmaceuticals that can heal the spirit, the soul, and the body of a human being. No wonder Jesus administered it to mankind at the point of our redemption on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us may say to ourselves, this person that offends me does not deserve forgiveness. 
do you deserve the forgiveness of God yourself? Ask yourself. I'm asking myself. If I say this person, the sin that this person is, has done, has committed against me, does not deserve forgiveness. What about the sins that you have sinned against God? Are you with me? Some of us may even say, I will not forgive until he or she apologizes. The Bible says, that the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Even in our foolishness, in my foolishness, in your foolishness, in my bad behavior, in your bad behavior, God is still calling you and I, and he's still very merciful and compassionate. He has unconditional love for you and I. So why would you say this person must apologize first? This used to be my posture until I cut this revelation that I'm sharing with you. Amen? Some of us people say, I will not forgive until the truth of the matter is known. What if you wait for the whole of your life and the truth of the matter is not known? And the truth of the matter shows up until after you are gone. Have you not heard of people that were mistakenly killed in prison? as a result of offenses they did not commit. Meanwhile, they've been owned and they are gone. Some of us may even say, all I want is justice and truth. You cannot give the justice and you cannot give the truth. Jesus is the only one that can give justice and truth. So why don't you do it? Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, Verses 14 to 15. For if you forgive men, if you forgive women their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Simple. Very simple. That is the reason why sometimes the devil uses unforgiveness to torture some of us. Torture us. In the name of Jesus, we will not be tortured. Holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness can kill in this life and block one from entering into rest in heaven. I have given, I have shared what my father in law shared with me about what happened to the founder of redeemed Christian God when Babala Koso died. Because of unforgiveness, God did not allow him to enter into rest in heaven. He had to come back. God had mercy on him. He had to come back to make, to make up with the person before he died again. Forgiveness entails, exon uh, uh, forgiveness entails exoneration, forbearance, and release, flushing out the toxin from the soul. Whatever the devil meant to achieve, God will turn it around for your good. The people, the, uh, Jacob, we all know what Jacob experienced, even with his uncle. His uncle treated him bad. He, he himself treated his brother so badly. You know the story of Re Rebecca. You know what happened to Joseph. We know what happened to Abimelech. Read about this in Genesis 27, uh, chapter 27. Your forgiveness may be the key to your offender's salvation. Let me repeat that. Your forgiveness may be the key to your offender's salvation. The other thing I want to talk about briefly is when we don't forgive ourselves. What if you are the betrayer? You have repented, but still find it difficult to forgive yourself. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25 says, I... Even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. This is God talking here. He said he has forgiven you. He has blotted out your transgressions and he, for your own sake, so that you will not die of it, so that you will not be full of, uh, of, um, of, of uh, guilt. For your own sake, I will not remember them anymore. If you do not take this out of the way, my sisters, you will end up with two weights of pins around your neck. 
The first one is the weight of your own sin and the unforgiving burden of someone that offended you. You will be carrying it. Oh, oh, I'm so guilty about what is happening to this person. I'm so guilty about what is happening to me too. May God help us in Jesus' name. Now we want to look at how we can detoxify ourselves from these dangerous substances. But if someone offends us when we have not done anything to deserve it, what should we do? The word of God encourages us to seek reconciliation for our sake and that of our offenders. Seek reconciliation. It is not a do or die thing. The word of God says seek reconciliation for your own sake and for the sake of your offenders. The reason is that we can judge ourselves by our own intentions and judge others by their actions towards us. We may think we have a good, we have good intentions, but the truth of the matter may be hidden from us too. We may not know the truth of the matter. In addition, there may be situations whereby our communication is not effective. Sometimes somebody may be telling you one thing and what you are hearing is the other. It happens to me all the time. I see, I see somebody saying one thing and what is being uh, interpreted is meaning something else. When we have an audience with our offenders, our aim should not be to give them a piece of our minds. That will not get us anywhere. Our, Sometimes you want to just blast them so that they know how hurtful we feel about what they did or said to us or demand for an apology. Doing this shows that we intend to control, to harass, to intimidate the offender. Our goal should be to restore godly relationship so that the devil will not have a foothold on our relationships. Our priority should be reconciliation and not to defend ourselves or claim our rights. They are wrong and we are right. Their actions or inactions may be a result of wrong information received by them, or they may be reporting the right information in an inaccurate manner. Therefore, my sisters, we should not have any problem with apologizing even when we are right. This I learned from my husband. He will apologize for things he did not do, and even things that you would think in, in your heart that he did, that he did not do. He will apologize in advance. Why? Because he's seeking reconciliation. He's seeking peace. And without giving an excuse, we should just for, uh, forgive and also apologize. Maturity keeps us humble and makes reconciliation process easy. And at the end of it all, God's name is glorified. Amen. It is a sin against God for us to report our offense to another person with the intention of gaining sympathy, support, or agreement of that person. It is very ungodly. It is not good. When you go to others first, they will only know your side of the story. So why don't you go to your offender and settle with the person rather than going to somebody else? That would be gossip and it is not good. No godly person will judge a matter based on one person's point of view. If the person you are reporting to is judging the other person, it's ungodly. It takes the evaluation of both sides. Of, uh, it takes the evaluation of both sides to judge correctly. And how can you judge correctly when the other person is not there to give you their own side of the story? Sometimes reconciliation may not occur due to hardened heart. Your offender may refuse to apologize. Your offender may not even see anything wrong with what he has done. Some of them will try to defend themselves or even say, oh, it's the devil, blame it on the devil. So I believe that in the last days, the devil will report us to God and say that, God, these your children, some of them lied against me. Many things I didn't do, they say I am the one. But Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says, if possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. In fact, there's a scripture that says, seek peace. 
That means run after peace and pursue it. If the other person or group of people are not interested in making peace with you, your conscience will be cleared before because you made attempt to settle with him or her or with them. So we want to pray. We can't do this alone. Sister Tosi, I want to stop sharing my, um, my screen so that we can see ourselves. We cannot do this alone. We can't do this alone, my sisters. We need the person of the Holy Spirit to help us. We can't do it alone. So I need you to cry to the Lord, say, God, I cannot do this alone. I cannot do this alone. Cry to God and say, I need the person of the Holy Spirit to help me. Spirit of the living God, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, Spirit of the living God. Help me. Cry to the Spirit of God. Say, I can't do this alone. Be very honest with him. If you allow flesh to take over, you won't be able to do it. You can't do it alone. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, your senior partner, your helper, to come and take his place and help you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses, verse 26, it says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because it makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ask the Spirit of God to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit. My sisters, cry out to the Holy Spirit. Please do not be distracted. Don't let these children distract you. No, don't look at anyone next to you. Face your God. Face your God. Face the Holy Spirit. It's between you and the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart, to locate hidden poisonous substances. Let the Spirit locate bitterness. Tell him to have a free hand to move around your soul, to move around your heart, to take away, to dig deep down in your heart and your soul. Take away hurts, take away malice, take away grudge, so that you can confront them. Let the Holy Spirit bring them out to the surface so that you can confront them. Renounce and denounce them in the name of Jesus. Say bye-bye to them today. Renounce them. Grudge, bitterness, malice. I have nothing to do with you. Today you are leaving my soul region. Today I'm flushing you out in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus flush them out of my soul. Let the blood of Jesus flush them out of your soul. My sisters, I plead upon you the blood of Jesus. I plead upon, upon your soul region the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus flush from your soul. Oh, rip of a sick yellow sin to bitterness, hurt, malice, grudge, so that you can confront them, confront them, renounce them, renounce them, denounce them. Say, I have nothing to do with you again in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of God help you to confront sin nature that has enslaved you for many years. And eventually, let the Spirit of God bring about the death oh, of these things in your, in your soul. But let Jesus, that has paid the price for you, redeem you with his blood. Let the blood of Jesus redeem you totally. Redeem Redeem your soul totally. Yield your soul to Jesus. Yield your soul. Let him cleanse your heart and your soul with his blood. Be released from this bondage, my sister. Be released from this bondage, my sister. Yes, be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. 
from every sexual abuse be released in the name of Jesus. From every physical abuse be released in the name of Jesus. From every physical abuse be released in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, in him, Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. By his grace, you are released in the name of Jesus from these dead, deadly substances. The blood of Jesus is flushing them away from you right now. Let the blood of Jesus flush them away from your heart. Detoxify, detoxify, detoxify. In the name of Jesus, flush them out right now. In the name of Jesus. My sisters, ask the Lord to cleanse every offender, everyone that has offended you in time past, even as a child. Ask the Lord to cleanse them as well from the sin that they committed against you with the blood of Jesus. If you know them in your heart, mention their names and say, today I release you. Release the person. Say, this day I choose to forgive you. I may not see you again. You may have even been dead, but today I release you. As my Lord Jesus forgave me, me too have forgiven you. Acknowledge your unforgiveness un un towards others. Visualize each person and forgive him and her from the depth of your heart. Forgive, forgive, forgive in the name of Jesus. Repent of any unforgiveness towards yourself. And for holding on to this for such a long time, ask the Lord to forgive you. That this thing has been eating you up. These things have been eating us up. Gradually, it has penetrated our body. It is giving some of us high blood pressure. Ask the Lord to release you. In the name of Jesus, ask God to give you the grace to forgive from the depth of your heart and to release your offenders. Ask God to enable you to extend to the offenders the same forgiveness that he extended to you. Pray for these people. Pray, my sisters. Ask God to perfect all that concerns them. It is at this point my sisters, if you can open your mouth to pray for your offender, that is how you know you are forgiven. If you can open your mouth to bless your offender, it is at this point that you will know if you have truly forgiven. When you summon courage to pray, I'm going to be silent for now. Give you time to pray for your offenders. Go ahead, my sisters, go ahead. Bless your offenders. Bless their children. Bless their family. May the blessings of God that is flowing through you flow through them.
Amen. Amen, my sisters. God bless you. Thank you. Do you feel light? Amen, my sisters. We're still praying. But before we pray, I want us to also learn something very important from Apostle Paul. Let's see how Apostle Paul handled offense. In Acts, in the book of, in the Acts of Apostles, chapter 24, verse 10. Verse 10, verse, and, uh, verses 12 to 16. The Bible says, then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered, in as much as I know that you have been for many years a judge for this nation, I do the more cheerful answer for myself. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogue or in the city nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they all, they call a sect, so I worship the Lord of my, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophet. I have, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. Paul says something important here. He said, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept that there, there will be, that there, that there be, be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself also strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. My sisters, we want to pray and ask God to help us to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. Pray that God will help you to have a conscience free of offense towards God himself and towards men. Ask God to make forgiveness your new spiritual posture. That henceforth, just like Apostle Paul, you will always strive to have a conscience without an offense, bitterness, hurts, malice, and grudges. Pray for the cleansing of other sin nature and walk of the faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, my sisters. We are free. Today is the day of freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. It's the day the Lord has made in your life, in my life. Day of freedom. Day of freedom. You are free. I'm free. In the name of Jesus, we are free. Now we are going into the interactive prayer session. Amen. Let's lift up our hands and, and bless the Lord. Please stand up, my sisters. Let's bless the Lord. Wherever you may be, let's bless the Lord. Let's thank God. Let's thank him for what he has done tonight. I feel light. I don't know about you, but I feel light. God is working in me. He's working in you. He's working on you. He's working on me. He's working with me. He's working with you. He's doing something new in our lives, individually and collectively. Amen. Let's worship God. Let's thank God. Now we are going to the time of interactive prayer session. session. And I want us to sing this song. Sister Tosin, can, can we sing that song about the blood?
name of Jesus, pass over. Pass over the souls of my sister. We are detoxified in the name of Jesus. We are detoxified in the name of Jesus. I have, I don't know if you would like to um, share your own testimonies or you would like to openly ask for your prayer points, but please give me some time to read out the anonymous ones. I have about 10 or 12 anon anonymous prayer points. But the one I want us to start with, can everybody hear me, please? Yes, ma, we yes, can hear ma. you. Yes, we can. First prayer point, I want you to please respond this way. In the name of Jesus, be detoxified in the blood of Jesus. Be detoxified with the blood of Jesus. This is a case of a lady that went to live, the parents separated, so she went to live with her dad along with her senior brother. And for over, for many years, I can't mention the years, you'll be surprised. For many years, she was sexually abused by her own father. For many years, she lived with her dad. The dad had a wife. The brother was there, but he would go into her room every week to molest her and to abuse her sexually. And this went on for many years. This woman is in her 50s now. She's still carrying the pain. She's not really enjoying life. She's not enjoying full sexual intercourse with her husband because she never had that. She was deprived of that because all she saw in sex was pain and cheat and somebody enjoying her for what she didn't want, you know? I want us to pray for our sister and say, in the name of Jesus, fight with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Abel, Mr. This one. God, we pray for our sister tonight. Lord, we say in the name of Jesus, you would detoxify our soul. Detoxify our soul with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, our sister be detoxified in the blood of Jesus. Detoxified with the blood of Jesus. Detoxified with the blood of Jesus. Detoxified with the blood of Jesus. Let the Lord take this thing away from your memory bank. Let it be wiped away from your soul. In the name of Jesus. My sisters, just read the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Upon the soul region of our sister. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Be flushed out of our sister. In the And his blood is for us tonight. His blood is for you. That we pray tonight. Let's cry out for our sister. Let's cry out for the deliverance of our sister. Let's cry out. Let's shout to the devil for the glory of our God. Let our sister be fully delivered. Let her enjoy the rest of our years and our marriage. God for good understanding, but she still. To be happy. Yes, the God said no, my sister. The God said no. Let that be done from our sister's soul region. Because our sister is saved. Tonight, our sister is still tonight in pain. 
I'm with you. Amen. 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 I'm going to read out the second prayer point. The second prayer point, our sister, one of our sisters says, thank God for all the heritage of God in my life. She's talking about her children. But she says she wants God to grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, that their eyes of understanding will be opened. She wants God to open the eyes of her children to see the good things of God. She wants God to heal, she wants God to heal her children and take away every blindness and give them sight. Lord, we pray for our sister's children. We pray that you will take away every blindness. You will give them sight. You will heal them of every stagnation. We said our children are experiencing stagnation. Any form of stagnation that has the children may be experiencing their adult children. Let God himself set them free in the name of Jesus that every wasted effort would be restored. In the name of Jesus, every wasted effort that the children have made, the Lord himself will restore goodness to them. They will, he will restore progress. From this very moment on, they will begin to experience progress. Progress in their studies, progress in their businesses, progress in their work. They will not be stagnant. They will move forward, forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, backward never, in the name of Jesus, Lord, give this children the architecture of their life that Jesus has made available for them. Let them be able to rise to see the architecture of their life in Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that the children of our sister will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We have another prayer point. This sister says, I want God to visit and heal my children in every circumstance that they are facing and bring them to the full authority. Lord, we pray for this, our, children, our sister's children. That you will heal them, oh God. Heal them, oh God. Heal our children. Visit them and heal them in every circumstance that they are facing and bring them to full maturity. The Bible says in Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Oh, we receive love, power, and sound mind for our sisters' children in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus walk for our sister and our children and our household in Jesus' name. The third prayer point says, from unknown, can you hear me? The third prayer point says, some unknown people are following me around. I need prayer for my security and the security of my husband, my daughter, my son. Let God protect us and shield us. Lord, we pray for our sister. We pray for her security. We do not know who are following her around for you. We know these unknown people. They are known by you. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 7, that the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. God, let your angels surround our sister and her children and her husband in the name of Jesus. Let the blood, let the blood of Jesus surround her home. Let the blood of Jesus cover her. The Bible says when you see the blood, when they see the blood, they will pass over. Let them pass over the home of my sister, of my sister. Let them pass over her family in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Another sister says, Please pray for me. I need a capital of 8,000 euros to do a business, even if it is to partner with a person. 
this scripture means the breakthrough in our business. Romans chapter 8, verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not give us all things freely? God will pray for our sister that you will give her all things freely. Pray that you will bless her, O oh Lord, with someone that will partner with us, a genuine person that will partner with us. Oh, that would bring in 8,000 people for them to put two business together. God will pray, oh Lord, that there will be trust, trust, trust. That you will favor her, you will favor this sister. I know this woman. I know she's a woman of God. I know she's a woman of faith. I know she's a woman that can be trusted. God will pray that you will connect her with the right person. Who she will do correct business with. Correct business in the name of Jesus. I think this person will succeed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Another prayer point from one of our sisters says, Pray that God will divinely connect my daughter to whom she is trying to help me. That means her child, her daughter is of a marriageable age. And she's yet to be married. And the mother wants the daughter to properly marry. Let God send the man. The Bible says, who a wife finds a good thing. That means there must be a man ordained by God to find her. We pray for this, our sister, that she will be found by the person God has ordained for her to be married to. In the name of Jesus. God will pray that you deliver this our sister from the spirit of delay. Let the spirit of delay be flush out of our system in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of delay be flush out of her completely in the name of Jesus. God will pray for all our sisters that are of marriageable age that are yet to be married. God in Jesus' name, give them their own husbands. Let their husbands find them. Let the blood of Jesus Destroy every spirit of delay. Crush out every spirit of delay from their lives in the name of Jesus. He wants God to transform her daughter as well. Let the daughter be fully transformed. Oh, let her be released. Oh, from everything that is causing things that are meant to be, not to be. Let her be fully delivered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, that it is not for that man to be a Lord, I will make him a helper. So make our sister to be a helper to the man that you have ordained for her to marry. Make all our sisters that are of marriageable age to be helpers. Prepare them to be genuine helpers to the men that you are bringing for them in the name of Jesus. Let them be found by God bearing men. Let them be found by, by men after the order of David. The Bible says David is a man after God's own heart. Let this men find our sisters that are due to be married in the name of Jesus. But she also wants us to pray for her second daughter. That she will turn to God. That she will draw herself to God. That God will help her in her personal work with God. Let us pray that as a daughter will be drawn to God. Like as we fear, David said, as we fear, pants after the water soul. So, no, my soul pants after you. But let this our sister's soul pants after you. Let us seek you. Let us seek you. Let us seek you. Let us know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the Lord will shield her and protect her. Even in the United States of America, where she is in the name of Jesus. God, and you will grant her the desire of her heart to gain admission into a nursing program. The oh Lord, which she needs to apply for into a college, like I said, to pray for scholarship for her, scholarship for our sister, scholarship for our sister, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray, oh Lord, that you will help her with the relationship that she's having. Lord, we pray that the relationship, oh Lord, whichever relationship she's building, would be built on the values of the kingdom of God, that she would delight herself in the Lord, and the Lord will have a 
back of our heart. In the name of Jesus, yes, the mother has the right for her daughter. God also has a desire for the daughter. Lord, we pray that these our young ladies, they will delight themselves in you and you will grant them the desires of God. Jesus, transform her, oh God. Singular out, oh Lord, for miracle. For secure full scholarship into Ivy League school, which she has applied for. Singular out, oh Lord, for scholarship. Favor her, oh God. Remove her name from wherever it is in put right now and put it on the table of those that are meant to favor her for this admission and for this scholarship. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you will guide her in her choice of future partner when the time is right. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Passover, Passover. Let's keep playing that. We have some more prayer points. Some of our sisters sent in their prayer points today. So we will permit them. Next time, if you send it late, we will need it until the next month. Though. Please always send in your prayer points on time. Please. Thank you, Lord. We have another prayer request for the fruit of the womb. This sister said, I've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for so yeah. Recently, I and my husband started the process of conception through fertilization. That is IVF. Process has been moving on well, except for a little challenge. The doctors keep insisting that we do donor eggs and sperm for some other, from other people. Because I and my husband's egg and sperm does not look strong. It's time we want to use our own egg and sperm less by the doctor's report. So he place us place us both on a certain point to out our sperm and egg. Please, I want you to please pray for us. I want to believe that we have some other sisters in this category among us. I want us to call upon the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. So, to the wounds of our sisters, as many of us that are here as are believing God for the fruit of the womb, we plead the blood of Jesus upon your womb. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the loins of, of your husband. Let the blood of Jesus detoxify everything that is inside there that is not making conception to happen. We plead the blood of Jesus. My sisters, let's plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus upon the wombs of our sisters that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the loins of their husband. We say let there be flesh. Detoxify in the name of Jesus. Let there be detoxification of the womb. Let there be detoxification of the loins. Let there be conception happening from the throne of grace. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. 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 Oh, Rama Sike Kenya Repo Sinto. Oh, Rico Papa. Lord. Our sisters choose to believe your report. They want your will to be done. They want their own sperm to be used. They want their own eggs to be used. They do not want any donors. They want theirs because we know that you said we should be fruitful. We know you can do it. Do it for our sisters. Do it for their husband. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Do it, oh God. The miracles of the fruit of the womb. Miracles in Akwanga. Miracles in Mafia. Miracles in Joss. Miracles in the UK. Miracles in Lagos. Miracles in New York. Miracles in areas where we have come from. Let the blood cleanse you. Cleanse your womb. Cleanse the voice of your husband. And cause there to be fruitfulness. We declare fruitfulness. My sisters, declare fruitfulness. 
declare fruitfulness. Declare fruitfulness. Fruitfulness for our sisters. Fruitfulness for their husbands. Fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Fruitfulness in Ghana. Fruitfulness in Ghana. Fruitfulness in the United Kingdom. Fruitfulness everywhere you are. And you are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Let fruitfulness. You are detoxified right now from every poisonous substances that may have been delayed. You are free to go and consume. So go and conceive right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. 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 If you have prayer points and you want to share it openly with my sister, please raise your hand. One of our sisters from the UK was online. She had to leave because she had to take her daughter to accident and emergency. The daughter suddenly falls asleep. Please let us pray for her. Her name is Sister Vero Kepada. I know she does not mind for her for her name. She wants her daughter. She wants us to pray for her daughter. She was on, but she had to take her daughter to accident and emergency with the United States. Let's pray for Yanolua that the Lord himself will cleanse Yanolua from the hair of her head to the sole of her feet and she will be set free completely from any sickness or disease or disease or fancy. Yanolua, Father in law, we pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you, will flush out of your body every toxin from the hair of your head to the sole of your feet. We pray you, Yanolua, Father in law, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. He said be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, my sisters, any other prayer request? This is an interactive prayer conference. I should not be the only one talking. I have spoken for those that do not want, those that want to remain anonymous. I have one more. Before I read that one more, I want to hear from you. All of us should not remain anonymous. Speak out and let the devil be put in place. Okay, let me take this next one. Can you all hear me? One of our sisters says that we should pray that her husband will come into the present truth. And the center of God's will for his life. Let us pray for our brother who is married to one of our sisters. That the Lord will bring him to present truth. And he will be at the center of God's will for his life. Lord, we pray for your servant, your son, who is married to one of us. Lord, we pray that the blood of Jesus will flush out of him anything that is toxic in his body. Let him be flushed out. Let him, O Lord, to experience the present truth and let him walk in it. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you will let him to be at the center of your will for him. In the name of Jesus, God, we also pray for our sister for a continuous renewal of our youth. We pray for newness. We pray for revitalization and a general overhaul of our body a health system so that she can continue to walk with God and for God in the name of Jesus. God set our sister free. Let her experience newness. God, I pray the same prayer for every one of us that we will all experience your newness. We will all experience your newness. God, help us to experience your newness. In the name of Jesus. Go seke, yele, go shinto, rike, sike, ke. I pray for newness for all my sisters. I pray for newness for all my sisters. I pray for strength. I pray for strength. We do our youth. Those are ones that are up to you. We do our youth. Those ones that are still below 50, we do their youth. We must stamina. We must strength. Bless our businesses. Bless our homes. Bless our children. Bless whatever we are laying our hands on to do. Bless it, O God. I have one more prayer point from here. 
Please, our precious sister says, Psalm 119, verse 49. Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to go. Lord, I'm saying, God, you are my hope. You are my hope, God. She's been sick for, for some time now, but she says, Lord, I believe in you. Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. To hope. That means, God, I can, I'm only holding on to your words. I'm, I'm hoping in your word. I'm holding on to your word. You are my only hope. Your word is my hope. I want to thank God for my healing and deliverance. We want to pray for this, our sister, that enough is enough of sickness. Enough is enough of all forms of sickness of the body. Enough is enough of depression. Enough is enough. Let there be healing, total healing, total deliverance. In the name of Jesus, our sister is reminding the Lord of the word that he spoke to her, especially during this period, that he will bring all of them to complete fulfillment at an accelerated speed. She is so convinced, she knows that God has spoken to her. She knows God has made a lot of promises, but she's now saying, Lord, please bring all of them to complete fulfillment at an accelerated speed. Even right now, Let's plead the blood of Jesus upon this, our sister. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon you, our sister, where you are right now, in your house, on your bed. We plead the blood of Jesus. We say, Lord, please do not prolong your promises that you have made for your, sister, for your daughter. Don't prolong these promises. Oh, Lord, Father, let all these promises, oh, Lord, let it come to pass right now. Bring all of them to complete the full men at an accelerated speed. In the name of Jesus, let your daughter experience accelerated speed of all the promises that you have made to her. In the name of Jesus. Lord. In the book of Daniel, the Bible tells us that Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed. There was a delay. Meanwhile, Daniel did not know that you had already release the answer to, her, to his prayers. But thank God for the angel that came and said, the prince of Persia came to me for this. Oh, in the name of Jesus, if there is any prince of Persia that may want to cause the day in, in the answer that you have already given to our sister and all of us here, Lord, in Jesus' name, we cancel their plans. We forsake their plans. We say what God has promised us shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a video on our site. My sister, every word that God has spoken concerning you, every promises of the Lord concerning you, concerning your children, concerning your husband, concerning your children, Every word the Lord has spoken concerning you, please plead the blood of Jesus upon you. Say there shall be no more delay. Plead the blood of Jesus, my sister. The blood of Jesus is available for us. The name of Jesus is available for us. They are all working in collaboration to ensure that God's answer to our prayers are speedily come to pass in the name of Jesus. Deliver us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Deliver us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, help us. Help us, O God. Sister Shola Price has put a prayer point here. She says, salvation for a family, friend, and her children. Hazel, Tim, Jeffrey, Lisa, Vicky, Kevin, and Giovanna. Or is it Johanna? Maybe it's in spell. But whatever the name may be, Lord, we cry out to you. On behalf of Sister Shola and her friend, we say, Father, let salvation come to the family of Hazel, of Tim, of Jeffrey, of Lisa, of Victory of Vicky, of Kevin, and Joanna. God, let salvation of our Lord enter their home. Let them be saved. Let 
them experience the salvation of their souls. In the name of Jesus, save your people, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for the healing of our brother, Dr. Badmore, from cancer of the lungs. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus upon Jesus, Dr. Badmore. Dr. Badmore, we plead the blood of Jesus upon your lungs. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus flush out of your lungs. Every cancer cell, every cancerous cell, let them be flushed out of your lungs right now. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Any other prayer points? Uh, my name is Catherine mm -hmm. Onyeguchi. Okay. I want to thank God for this type of meeting. It's what we've been praying for, and I thank God for, for today. And I believe God that this meeting will continue. Today is not going to be the last day. I believe God that this meeting will continue. I'm really very glad, and I'm excited to be part of this meeting. Thank you, Sister Diola, for all that you have put together so that we will all enjoy this meeting. I give God all the praise and all the adoration. Amen. Thank you, Sister Catherine. God bless you. You are welcome. Thank you. That's Sister Catherine Onyebuchi speaking from Ghana. Thank you, ma. God bless you. Go ahead and God unmute yourself you. and talk. If you want us to share prayer together, we are available. We are here for one another. Unmute and talk. You are free to talk, please. I'm tired of being the only one talking. Please talk. <laughs> Let's pray for one another. Let's share with one another. Let's carry other, uh, one another's burden. Go ahead, please. Okay, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I, have a question. I have a question. Based on one of the slides that um, you had said, is, uh, is yes, sorry, my sister, like... can you mention your name? Don't let you talk to okay, my name is um, Faith Asolabi. My name is Faith, Faith Asolabi. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so in, in one of your slides, you had said that um, it is a sin to report the offender. Yes. Are you saying, for, for, for example, in, um, how do we handle case like you see someone um, does something wrong that is really bad, like for example, someone rapes his sister or your neighbor and uh, you witness somebody raping a child are you saying that it's, it's not good for me to report to the authority how should that how should such um, incidents be taken care of thank you very much sister faith I'm so glad that you yes All i right. am glad that you brought this up okay. if such situation happens Please report the matter immediately and stand by what you say. When you report and say, don't say one that is stealing, it turns to gossip. But when you report and stand by what you see, God himself will be a witness to what you are saying. Mm. But when you see such, such thing happen, and instead of you to report to the authority, you carry the information to another person. It has become a gossip. Are you with me, Sister Faith? God will expect you to report to the appropriate authority and stand by the report. This is what I saw and I'm standing by it. God will give you a pat on the back. He will be so proud of you. So please, my sister, report because that's a criminal offense and stand by your report. Okay, I can hear you now. So um, are you saying that once you report, you don't discuss that issue again? You just keep quiet. Except, the court, except if the, 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 the court or the police called to take your testimony. So I, I can't tell my husband. I said, oh, this is what happened. You can tell your husband. It's like telling yourself. Your husband is like telling yourself. It's, the, it's your other house. Wow. Okay, I think I understand. Hello, my what sister. You're... Can you understand? I think what I understand what you. Yes. Yes. So there's no need for us to discuss it just for G's sake. I guess, ah, you just no, see what. It's a very serious you know? case that I do not understand how I can even sit to explain. You understand to sit to explain. Uh, 
because what what will I gain from discussing and talking about it? That's like I'm romancing the case and I'm allowing it to go, go on, go on and on. Instead, what I need to do is to take it before the Lord. You and your husband take it before the Lord and ask God to intervene and heal the person that has that is hurting. That is more mm-hmm. important. The healing of that person is more important than the talking. Report to the authority. Speak to your husband about it. You and your husband pray for this person, for this child, and pray that the Lord Himself will give this person. I don't know if my, my point is clear enough, my sister. Yes, it's, it's clear enough. It's clear enough. But sometimes um someone hurt you. I've been in situations where a lot of people have done something to me, and I, I just feel like sharing to another sister. It's not because I'm I want to gossip, but because I just want to let it out of my heart. Let me to see, okay, this is what has happened. Okay. And and I know that I didn't do anything, but this person has gone ahead to 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 stay away from me. You know, I've been in a situation where people just keep malice with me and I don't even know what I've done. I'm, and I'm like trying to share to another sister that I know is matured enough to understand what has happened. Not because I, I want to just gossip, but I really want to let out, maybe see from that person's point of view and see God also will also speak to my heart you know and sometimes i've even gone ahead to make peace and yet it's not working i just thank god for the word today you move ahead if you try you must not be at peace with everybody you try your best and do your part and ensure that you are at peace with god which is much more important yeah basically thank you sister know, someone, another sister can share because i know we ladies a lot you know we share a lot we like to share issues maybe someone for just to have someone to have a listening ear so that maybe the person can see from your own point of view but now you're telling us that there's no need to just pray to god about it god will help us let me explain to you what i mean sister faith let's be let's follow what the bible says the bible says that if you have an issue with somebody Go to that person first. Are you with me? Are you with me, Sister Faith? The, your first point of contact is not another person that you want to talk to. No. Go to that person first. It is after that person refuses that you can now call somebody as a witness in the presence of that same person. That's mm. the way the Bible says we should do it. Not at the if you're doing it at the back of that person, then it's turning to gossip. You may not mean it to be a gossip, you may not mean it to be a gossip, but that is what it is turning to my sister. You call the person in the go to the person first. If she refuses, if the person refuses, then you can call somebody else. And if the person still refuses, then go to the elders of the church. That's what the Bible says, my sister. I know you will mean well, but let's do it God's way, the way God wants it to be. Tafet, are you with me, ma? Thank you. She's not hearing me now. Thank you. Yes, please. I'm glad you are making it interactive. Good evening, sisters. Good evening, my sister. God bless you. Go my, name, my name is Ijoma from Abuja. Uh, I am really grateful to You're God welcome. to yes, I'm really grateful to God to for this meeting for the whole uh in, the intention of God for this meeting, which may be made clear to us. We are we are warriors, and uh, a warrior can go to the battlefield with so much luggage. A warrior is supposed to go light and go with the weapons that he should get to the war front. We don't need baggage. It's a nice see God. He wants us to really, really take that place of warring women. And so the, the need for the education that has taken place tonight, I, I feel very light, and I 
a sense of empowerment to begin to walk in the fullness of God's purpose for us. And, and so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, for us. Let's be encouraged. Let's be empowered. Let's believe that God has said everything we have said to him today. And he, he, has, he has placed us on his surgical table and he has, you know, cleansed us and he has purged us. Let's go, let's leave the past where it belongs and let's forge ahead in God you know into the future uh, thank you ma'am for for what you're allowing god to do through you and thank you for all the the the, the sisters that are really you know going supporting you and standing in that place you know of leadership in in, in this group thank you so much I, i'm grateful thank you sister Ijeoma. you are welcome god bless you thank you very much i think we should and talk about the way forward. I love the advice Sister Ijeoma has given to us. There has been a lot of detoxification as we yielded ourselves. I believe there is detoxification that is flushing. The blood of Jesus has worked for us tonight. The name of Jesus has worked for us. The Holy Spirit has helped us to achieve what we have been looking forward to achieving. And I believe that we, the meeting has been successful. My heart. I just want us to move forward. So let's talk about us moving forward. Let's take the advice of our sister Ijeoma from Abuja. Moving forward. Sister Taiwa Folahion said something here. We will declare it to Sister Taiwa. She said, if the offender is invisible, you can share. How can, the, how can an offender be invisible? Sister Taiwo, I want to learn from you, ma. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to. Okay, so what happened was that sometimes ago at work, at my workplace, many years back, somebody wrote a malicious email about me. Of course, there was no name, no identity of the person, and sent it to the entire workforce. There was no way we could catch the person that wrote the email. So I discussed with Pastor that this was what happened. I'm hurt. I feel bad because everything the person was not true about me. In fact, I was feeling sorry for the person when Pastor started <laughs> raining courses on the people. I myself, I felt sorry, and I was just hoping that Pastor would stop raining courses on the person because what the person did was really, 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 really bad. The email was very, very wicked. So in my heart, I was like, ah, Pastor, it's okay, please <laughs> just forgive the person. But when I talked to Pastor, I was able to finally, you know, uh, take it off my mind. I'm still at the same workplace. I don't know the person to tomorrow. I don't know who that email. So sometimes you can be, you can have an offender that the person, the person just doesn't like something about you, but the person doesn't want to show his face or her face at the same time, but it's still saying some bad things about you. So how do you fight such a battle? You need to talk to somebody so you can forgive and you know, move on with your life rather than trying to investigate. Of course, I try to investigate to find the person, you know, <laughs> but... Unfortunately, I couldn't do that. I just had to let go by the, the Holy Spirit helping me to forget and forgive. That was what happened to me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that experience, Sister Taiwo. You know what? Well, the mere fact that the offender remained anonymous shows that you have won, shows that the person is a coward, shows that God himself, will, the invisible God, will fight that invisible person for you. So you want my sister. You are still at the same place working. You don't even know if the person is still there. You don't know what God has done. You don't know. You don't know if the person has repented by the reason of how you handle the situation. You don't know. We don't know what has happened. But one thing I know is that you won. The invisible God has won the invisible battle for you. God bless you. Let's talk about the way forward, my sisters. Hello, good evening. Good evening. God bless you. This is Paula um, from Lagos. Okay, so there was something that you mentioned that really triggered an instance that's, that recently happened to me. And we are talk, since we are talking about the way forward, there was a time that DMW, when he was teaching us about love and actually being characterized by love as, you know, God's sons and daughters, he said that we need to have sanctified common sense when we are extending that love to people. And my question is, where, how do we strike a balance between... 
you know, being children or women of God, rather, being women of God and letting people experience his love through us. Let people experience Sorry, there's hmm. an echo. I'm glad that this question is coming up from that this question is coming up. I really appreciate this question, Sister Paula. Sister Paula is my Please, can I, can is I provide my... can I provide some context? Go ahead. So, yes, for please. instance, there's this person that I'm always being of help to, and anytime they need anything, I'm I'm there to help them, even if they don't need anything. God lays on my heart and I help them. And then during the week, they did something that was wrong and they lied to me. So I called them out about it. But the nature at which I called the person out, out was a bit too harsh. And even God had convicted me about it. In immediately it happened and so i apologize to the person now there is this very demonic mindset that a lot of nigerians have that if someone apologizes that means you're automatically right and the person is wrong right so this person imbibed that mindset and decided to make up lies and slander me to a bunch of people that know me and you know, in my anger and in my frustration with this person, realize, understanding that the reason why I apologized was because I need to be right before God, not really because I felt like I was, you know, all the way wrong. Yes, maybe I raised my voice a, a, a lot louder than I would naturally do. But the person, because of that apology, the person went to go and basically add more stuff and make up more lies and basically say that oh i apologize because of this 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 and this and this which was never really a thing so now in me trying to be right before god but not trying but not trying to be an idiot and not trying to not have sanctified common sense like dnw says how do i now go forward with this person because i'm I, i'm not going to lie it was something that was very hurtful and i really needed this this prayer session to move forward because i had already said in my heart i was like this person let this be the last time this person ever asked me for anything i will never help them and i opened my mouth to say that and i even felt bad but at the same time where is that balance how do i not let people take advantage of me and still know that i'm walking accurately mm. thank you very much for this question sister paula um the number one thing, two things I would say about this question. The number one thing is, the Bible says something, that when you pray, go into your closet. That God, when you fast, go into your closet. Do not let people know. And I believe it's the same principle that is applied here. That when you forgive, when you say things to make peace, it is between you and God. God knows that you do it. The Lord that says that you did it for his own sake to reward you. Even if people think you did it, don't worry about that. I learned that from my husband. Time will tell. God himself will prove your innocence. Even if you talk from now till eternity, it cannot prove your innocence. It's only God that can do it. So when you apologize, you know in your heart, and God that knows that you know that, that knows that you do it for peace sake, He will reward you, and He will vindicate you. He will speak to the heart of that person. For example, I mentioned something. I said my husband would apologize for things he did not do wrong. But many a times that I have seen people that he has apologized to coming back to tell him that. It is not you, P.O., that should be apologizing. We are the ones that should be apologizing. Why is that so? Because those people have the spirit of God in them because they are fellow, they are fellow believers. The spirit of God will convict them that this man just ap apologized to you for peace sake. You are the one that is wrong. And I've seen many, 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 not even one or two, many times when these same people come back to come and apologize to P.O., I hope you get that, my point. Trying to prove our point that we are the one that is right or wrong will not solve this issue. The person that you are talking about now, if he's a Christian, has the spirit of God. That spirit of God will convict that person. 
of the wrong that they have done to you. It's a matter of time. I hope, you, I hope that answers your question. And the other question, the other answer that I want to give is about how to maintain a relationship with the offender. You will need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide that relationship. Number one, we've been taught to make ourselves vulnerable, but you have to allow the Spirit of God to guide you through that vulnerability. I don't think God will want you to suffer severely again and again. No, but he will have to, you will have to allow his spirit to guide you. He would want you to keep it with the person. He would want you to still maintain friendly relationship, but to which extent you have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. I hope that, my answer, that answers the, the, the last question you asked. Allow the Spirit of God to guide that relationship. In fact, my husband and I still prayed about this particular area this morning. But the moment you start, if you want to know that you have truly forgiven that person, start praying for that person. The more you pray for that person, the more you feel light. But the Holy Spirit will have to be the compass that you will use to measure the level of relationship you will have with the person. But the bottom line is no bitterness, no grudge, no nothing against the person. I hope this answers the question, Sister Paula. Thank you. Yes, moving forward, my sisters, let's learn from each other. Thank God today is Friday. We have time to talk. Let's, let's relax. Let's fellowship. Let's learn from one another. Iron sharpens iron. I want to learn from you, Sister Emilia. Sister Funke, I only day. I want to learn from you. Susan Mwila from London, please. I want to learn from you. Say something. It's good to have you here, Mwila. I'm so happy to see you. Sister Bumiomo say, I want to learn from you. Sister Bumi, Sister Funke. Sister Diola, I am so humbled. This is such an excellent program. In fact, from the beginning to the end, learn from me. I am learning and I'm just doing, hmm, hmm, Father Lord. I mean, I can so testify to when someone with what Paula said, and then when you know that you're really let go, you start praying for this, for this, start praying for the person that because you know you cannot cut off. You know you have to maintain that relationship. And but you, like you said, you don't want to be hurt all the time. So you say, Lord, just help me to maintain this relationship and still be in your will, because that's the most important thing. Because you can't avoid the person, especially if the person is family. Are you going to go away from family? You can't. So you've got to. So what I what you what what I can testify to is that when you start praying for the person, every time they do something, it doesn't affect you like you did initially when you get so angry. And like you said, you want to vent to someone and say, see what this person has done again. Mm -mm. Like you said, it's gossiping. Don't vent, don't vent. We, as women, we want to vent. We say, let's talk to someone. Maybe the person can help us feel better. I learned today that it's flipping gossiping. It is. I just realized it. It is. So I'm learning Thank so you. much today, Sister Diola. God bless you. I am so happy I joined this. I am so happy. God bless you immensely. So I'm learning to oh, me, learn from you. <laughs> I'm learning too. I'm learning too. Thank you. We are learning from one another. Techno Spark. That's not my sister's name. Can you put your name, please, my sister? We wish to suggest that the meeting should always start by 5 p.m. so that those of us living very far reach home in good time. Oh, my sister, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I, I real, we just realized that if you look at the videos, you find out that somebody in a church or in a, in a church setting, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but the point is most people don't close from work until five o'clock. 
Ah, I'm so sorry about this. But let, we will round up soon. We will round up soon. I'm so sorry. Sister Mo, you're so good. Sister No, South Go says it's always, it also reminds me of Dr. Noah Woodruff when he said, relate with the people without a reference. That is it. You don't have to make a reference to what they have done. Just relate with them. God bless you. My sister, Techno Spark. Next time, change it to your name. Oh. Techno Spark is not my Hello. sister. You are the one that. Uh, is you are good evening, Sister Kate. Hello. Sister good Kate. evening. Good evening. God bless you. But Kate Hello. Johnson is my sister. Kate Johnson is my sister, not Techno it's Spark. Kate Johnson. Put your name next time. Okay, uh, go ahead. Go ahead and say what you want to. Okay, so, ma'am. I thank God for today's uh, lesson topic that we ended us. Like in my own to me, I think so I was discussing something with my daughter. So now said the daughter should not talk to me, she should not greet me. But later I went to her and I told her that what's the reason why you said this girl should not greet me? You said because he has some things. I said I was not talking with your daughter, it was my own daughter. That the girl was just standing there. She now said, okay, I said, that's what she did that made me to be angry. And she said, okay, that she's sorry. That she doesn't know that that was really touched me. I said, because the girl used to greet me and talk to me, but you stop by and say, if you see how she greets me, the girl will send the girl out of his, your, own, your own house that she will come and stay with me. I'll be the one taking care of the girl. But the moment I speak with her, I will resolve the case. And everything was okay. Very good. So the lesson from us that we're learning from Sister Katie is that she went to the woman straight and they were able to resolve the issue. It was just a little misunderstanding. But because they spoke with one another, they were able to resolve the issue. Thank you, Sister Kate. God bless you. Well, um, there's a message here that says, good evening. Um, Mrs. Nick Chube from Enoch Center, Lafayette, Nasarawa State, couldn't make it for the meeting because her son is not well. Please, let's pray for her son. Sister Nosa Gold, are you there? Please, can you pray for Sister Nick's uh, son, who she has, uh, who is not well, please, before we go. Any other person that wants to say one thing before we go? I believe God has visited us. Sister Nosa Gold, are you still there? I'm here, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, please. Let's but please pray for Mrs. Nick Chube's son that is sick. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, son of righteousness, as you arise with healing upon our son. Thank you, O Lord, because, O God, we as your children, we enjoy, O God, that covenant of healing and good health. And Lord, tonight, oh God, we ask, oh God, that Father, let your healing hand rest upon that child right now in the name of Jesus. We say the life of God in Christ Jesus flows right from the hair of his head to the sole of his feet, flushing out anything that is contrary, oh God, to his life in the name of Jesus. Anything contrary to good health, anything contrary, oh God, Father, to the functioning of that body will flush them out by the blood of Jesus. And we say, let the life of God flow, flow into him right now, flow into him right now in the name of Jesus. We say, receive life and rise up from that bed of affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, O oh God, for that, O oh God, Father, which you have done on the cross, O oh God, Father, for this child, Lord, is a settled case. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God, because, O oh God, Father, we will hear good testimony. We will hear the good testimony, O oh God, Father, of the great things, O oh God, that you have done in the life, O oh God, Father, of this son of ours. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Bless you, my sister. Sister Nempan, are you online? Please, can you round up the meeting for us if we don't have any other person to say anything? Can I just give an announcement before Sister Nempan, are you online? But before we round up the meeting, please note that our intercessory and warfare prayer meeting will still be on next week, Friday. This is a new meeting. This is an interactive prayer conference. This will be taking place every first Saturday of every month. Every first Saturday of every month, 6 p.m., we will be having our heart-to-heart -heart interactive prayer sessions. But our third Friday of every month still stands for the, part for the uh, prayer and, inter and for our intercessory and warfare prayers. Please keep that in mind. The next one will come up next week, Friday, 6 p.m. So I would like to call upon Sister Nempan to write um, to round up this meeting with a word or two, then you close us up with a word of prayer. We still can't hear you. Can you hear us now? Are you getting us now? Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We can hear you now. Go ahead, ma'am. Can you say one or two things then? Close us up. Pray for every one of us before we go. Please the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. We celebrate God for this evening. Something happened you know, that relieved us from certain burdens we were carrying. In the testimony and the, from the prayer sitting here, like I, was, I saw women praying. I knew that something was happening within us. So we give God praise for giving you the wisdom to call for this conference to give us an opportunity to. You know, unburdening ourselves before the Lord and to put some things into proper perspective. So we trust that going forward, we are going to see ourselves as people who are really working straight, working without carrying any burdens over us, working with the mind of Christ and reacting to situations as the Holy Spirit will lead us to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, man. Let's pray for every one of us as we go. And so, Father, we worship you because you are God. We worship you because you descended and have a meeting with us this evening. We worship you because you came down with your healing power. We worship you because you came down and fought our infirmity and liberated us from that which has held us seated up captive. We say thank you, Father, for your knowledge that came upon us. We say thank you because with the liberation we have now, we know that we will always come before you with purity of heart, purity of purpose, with lightness of spirit, and have a fellowship that will be without hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray, oh God, that as many that are here who unburden themselves this evening, we trust that, Father, this burden that has been lifted and, and then dropped at Calvary will remain permanently there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray, oh God, that above everything else, you will help us, O oh God, so that we will walk in obedience to you. So that we will not even start as a stumbling block to any of our sisters or as a rope of offense to any of our sisters. But rather, we will be people who will carry each other to be a source of support for one another, to be a source of healing for one another, to be even a source of understanding for one another in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, paraventure, there are areas of our lives that we would not be able to bring, actually bring to alignment this evening. We ask that you you send your UV light, O oh God, to search and purify us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for as many of kings of glory that, that might be paraventure carrying some burdens that they've been unable to unleash before you today. We ask, O oh God, that because they are part of this meeting, we visit them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, because of this encounter we've had with you, oh God, our lives cannot remain the same again. As we return to our various homes, O oh God, the way we are going to relate even in our neighborhood, the way we are going to relate even with our family members, the way we are going to relate with one another as sisters, as brothers, oh God, Father, fellowship shall reign unhindered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank us, thank Amen. you for helping us to forgive. Thank you for helping us to unburden ourselves. Father, thank you for helping us yes, to put Lord. Thank you, oh Father, for giving us the tools on how to navigate our way around offenses, because on this earth there will be offenses. 
on this earth, there are going to be things that will happen that we may not understand. But we thank you because you've given us the tool, oh God, that will liberate us, liberate us, and to help us to float above every form of offense in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we release malice on the minds of every one of us here, all the women who are part of this program in the mighty name of Jesus. We release grudge in the mighty name of Jesus. We release unforgiveness out of our minds in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare forgiveness. We declare healing. We declare the balm of Gilead over every heart here in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for the vessel you use, oh God, we ask over mm-hmm. that you finish her in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the sincerity of purpose upon her life. Thank you for the openness, oh God. Thank you because you are making her that river, that river of living waters that is pushing out to bless, to heal, to give directive. We say, oh Lord, King of glory, because she has availed herself to be so used by you. God, she will never lack anything that she needs that pertains to life and godliness in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Father, we thank you because you have blessed us. This evening, Lord God, as we depart to our various homes, we ask that you go with us, Lord God. Let our spouses see us and see new women. Let our children see us and see new women. Father, even as we interact with one another, let us see new persons in one another in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let us deal with one another with love. With love in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we know you heard us. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, I can tell you in advance that our next prayer focus um, for our next meeting, our next interactive prayer meeting will be prospering spirit, soul, and body. God wants you and I to prosper spirit, soul, and body. That will be the first Saturday of June, 6 p.m. I'm sorry we have to settle for 6 p.m. because we have to consider that we have people joining from outside of Nigeria too. We have people joining from Ghana. We have people joining from the UK. So we looked at the time. We looked at, we, you know, Sister Nempa, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Rejoice. All of us, we looked at it. Sister Sonia from Ghana, we looked at it and came to conclusion that it has to be Saturday, um, 6 p.m. So that the next, please start praying towards it. God will speak through you. He will speak through me. Our interactive prayer session will be towards the focus will be prospering spirit, soul, and body. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely weekend. I love you very much. See you next week, Friday.